once more into the fray. To the last good fight I'll ever know. Live and die on this day. Live and die on this day. Fuckers. Before I get started, I'd like to kindly ask that you hit the like button and please subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. Come on. Do it. Do it! So I conducted a poll in my community tab not too long ago, and all of you elected for me to do more retro reviews, a promise that I intend to deliver on. Now the movie that I'm going to talk about today wouldn't be considered a classic by most people's standards, but I wanted to take the opportunity to showcase a movie that I feel is overlooked and underappreciated. And to me, that movie is The Grey from Joe Carnahan. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. It was released on December 11, 2011, and stars a very rough and rugged Liam Neeson. I mean, you don't get much more high T than Liam Neeson, especially in this movie. He's kind of become his own genre at this point, because everything he's done since Taken looks and feels exactly like Taken, usually just in a different environment. I think he clearly saw a formula that worked for him, and then he went all in on it. But The Grey, to me, is a standout from this era in his career. It's not just Taken on a train or taken on a plane. This movie has a deep emotional core while still remaining badass, and that's a good balance to achieve. That makes sense. Liam Neeson plays sharpshooter John Otway, who is tasked with protecting Alaskan oil refinery workers from local predators. And when John and his crew are set to return home, their plane crashes in the frozen wilderness. And that's when shit really hits the fan. Because the surviving eight men must brave the elements to find salvation. The biggest problem is, is they're also being stalked by a pack of hungry wolves. When it rains, it pours. I'm just marking my territory. You got in the way. This is actually a pretty basic premise, but I think where this movie sets itself up for success is that you get to know each and every character. Through their interactions with each other and the stories that they tell, we get to learn a little bit about them. So when they are inevitably put in danger, we actually give a shit about what's going on. This is something that modern Hollywood does not do well at all. That's right, it stinks! I can't stress to you how realistic this movie feels, if for no other reason on how these guys talk to each other. This sounds like how men talk to each other. They're busting each other's balls, and they're putting each other to the test as well. They're even afraid to show weakness or show that they may be scared in this situation. It's actually very macho. Oh yeah! Some of them even have an almost primal reaction to this situation. One character, played by the equally high T Frank Grillo, is basically your typical asshole that you see in movies at first. He's difficult, he's shady, he doesn't want to listen to Liam Neeson's character's advice. He's challenging Liam Neeson's character like a member of the pack would challenge the Alpha. You see what they did there? This is another thing that this movie actually does really well, and that's that Frank Grillo's character actually shows growth throughout the movie. If he was a modern asshole in a modern movie, he would just be this blatantly racist piece of shit with no redeemable qualities. Because that's how people write characters in 2022. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. Make no mistake about it, Liam Neeson's character is the alpha of this movie. He has the most knowledge about the wolves, as well as their best chance for survival. So gradually throughout the course of the movie, a brotherhood is kind of formed between the men. And they all had very little connection between each other prior to this, but they kind of come together just for no other reason as they all want to find a way to survive. It's basically their way of keeping hope alive. You son of a bitch. Also, from a personal standpoint, Liam Neeson's character is going through some personal demons as well. 
At one point when watching this movie, I just thought to myself, can you cut this guy a break? This movie is very dire and it's fucking brutal at times. When I say that no character is safe, I truly mean that. If the wolves don't get you, the environment will. The deck is firmly stacked against these characters. I remember there was some controversy when this came out about how the wolves are depicted in the movie. Because it paints them in a bad light and just as vicious killers. If he dies, he dies. I have no doubt that things were exaggerated to make it a little bit more cinematic. This happens a lot in man vs. beast type movies, but even if wolves aren't as relentless or vicious as they are portrayed here, the cinematic wolves created for this movie alone are extremely terrifying. There's a scene where all the characters run into this wooded area, and they're trying to start a fire to keep the incoming pack at bay, and you hear all this growling and howling from the forest around them, and then suddenly they hear this massive roar and everything just goes silent. This is what the film does to build the introduction of the alpha wolf. It's brilliant, it's awesome, and it feels like the scene comes right out of a horror movie. I like it a lot. I mentioned this movie being brutal, and these guys are basically getting picked off one by one, kind of like the Predator does. And some of them, in some scenes, are literally getting eaten alive by wolves. Pretty much the worst way you could go out. And if the wolves aren't enough, you got the cold and the altitude to deal with as well. This beautiful setting that this movie takes place in, in the Alaskan wilderness, is portrayed perfectly as the scariest place imaginable. I just love the wilderness survival stories. They bring out the primal instincts in me as a viewer as well, and I always think to myself, what would I do in this situation? And when you can put yourself into a movie, that means you're connecting with it. Because it's all part of the plan. This movie also caught some shit when it was released for its ambiguous ending. Because we all know that people like to be spoon-fed things, apparently this was the case even back in 2011. I'm not going to spoil the ending because my goal with this video is for people who haven't seen it to go and watch it, but I'm just going to say I personally love the ending because the whole movie really isn't about the finale. It's not about who comes out on top. It's more about the internal spiritual journey that these characters go through while dealing with the situation that they're in. If you focus too much on the ending, I think you're doing the story that's being told a bit of a disservice. Also, stay to the end, there is an after credit scene here. This scene probably pissed some of those same people off that were mad about the ending to begin with, but I actually really enjoy it. Fuck me, right? Overall, I think The Grey is highly underrated, and it is my favorite modern Liam Neeson movie. Yes, I prefer The Grey even over Taken. Don't at me. The man versus beast aspect of this movie is badass, but the movie is so much more than that. It's a story about survival, both from a mental and physical standpoint. I highly recommend that you go raise your T-levels and watch The Grey as soon as possible. If you value my opinion as a movie reviewer at all, trust me, you won't be disappointed. And that's why I'm giving The Grey the pleased Palpatine. Good. Good. So have you seen The Grey? If you have, let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below. As always, please like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell for notifications, and I'll see you next time right here on Real Shift. Thanks for watching. Peace out.